Bible reading is taken from John chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the, the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, again, can I thank everybody uh, for taking part uh, this evening. I'm going to stand over here now because now that I'm going to speak to you for a wee while, there's two reasons why I'm over here. Number one, I have a tendency to move about a wee bit when I'm speaking, and I'd be scared of knocking that down and you're all laughing at me again. And the second reason is because I want to talk to the boys and girls down here, and they're mostly, the, the Sunday school ones are all here, so I want to talk to them. Now, I have the screen here, and I'm going to use PowerPoint, so... Hopefully the first slide, there we go, the first slide has come up and obviously we have our carol service today and you're all here and it's lovely to see you here. It is getting a bit warm and I tend to take my jacket off even when it's cold so you'll forgive me for taking it off now. But boys and girls, that has been brilliant. You have been absolutely fantastic. And you know, you said nearly everything that I need to say. You said everything about, you told us the whole message of the gospel from the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ right through to the death and the resurrection, the rising again of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that was absolutely brilliant. But you know, we're all here because it's Christmas time, aren't we? We're all here because we're looking forward to Christmas. And how many sleeps is it now? James asked this morning, there's hands going up very quickly. Two sleeps. Two, I can't wait. I really can't wait. I can hardly sleep on Christmas Eve, to tell you the truth. I don't need an alarm on Christmas Eve to wake me up. But anyway, we're really looking forward to Christmas. And, and one of the things that we love about Christmas, we normally, well, well, there's lots of different things we love about Christmas. One of the things that we love about it is that we get to spend time with our family, maybe with people that we don't see very often in our family. And we take time to go and, and to meet with them and to see them. One of the other things that we all, or some people like about Christmas, some people more than others, is we love our Christmas dinner. Who likes their Christmas dinner? Yeah, yeah, look at all the hands going up back there. There's lots of people like their Christmas dinner. I, I love my Christmas dinner, and I really look forward to Christmas dinner. Now, what are you looking forward to more than anything else? Go ahead. Presents. Presents, that's absolutely right. Looking forward to getting our Christmas presents. And as I say, it's only two days. Two days from now, you'll have got presents and all the rest of it. Do you know, whenever I was your age, I loved getting presents. And my mummy's here, and I'm not going to ask her to tell you this, but I remember getting up at wee small hours in the morning and sneaking down and opening presents and all the rest of it. Before everybody else got up, I would have sneaked down and opened presents. I'm not telling you to do that. I don't want any mummies or daddies coming to me and saying afterwards, I wish you hadn't have said that. Okay, listen to your mummies and daddies and stay in bed until it's time to get up. But whenever I was wee, one of the things that I used to love getting as a Christmas present was a board game. So games like maybe uh, Monopoly or, or things like that. Does anybody get board games? Nowadays, nobody gets board games anymore. There's a couple of girls who get board games. I love board games. And one of my favorite board games, the favorite one that I ever got at Christmas, was this one here, which is going to come up now. Over here. No, we're not working. There we go. It'll probably go on about three or four slides now that I've clicked it three or four times. Anyway, Game of Life. I loved Game of Life. It's a very old game. Game of Life was first made around about 1860. So it's 160 years old coming. Now, I'm not going to refer to anybody, but it's the it's right age anyway. 
It's about 160 years old. And in this game, whenever you start off in the game, everybody gets a wee car and they get a wee person. And if you're, if you're male, you get a wee blue stick person. And if you're female, you get a wee pink one. And that's the way it is. And then you start off with life from birth and you go right through life to old age. And you, maybe you have to get a job in it. Sometimes in it you have to go to university. Sometimes, or well, all the time in it you get married. And uh, maybe you have a family. And you go right through the board game from, from birth right through to what they call the day of reckoning. And it's on the screen uh, in the PowerPoint there. It shows up there on the top. It's the day of reckoning. And you have this day of reckoning and it's a game that you can play and it's really good fun. And we used to have really good fun with it. And it talks about life. But the thing about life, boys and girls, is this. Life's not a game. Life's a very precious thing. And while the game of life was good fun, life's not a game. And the Lord Jesus Christ came and we have a verse and I want to read that verse just now and we're going to refer to it a few times. And the verse is this, it's in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 14. And it says, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. The Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. We think about the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't come and his life wasn't a game. He came and he was born and we thought about the fact that he was born as a little baby and then he lived a perfect life and he never did anything wrong. And then when he lived that life, then cruel men took him and, and put him upon a cross and he suffered on that cross and he bled and he died on the cross of Calvary. And then he rose again from the dead. And he won a great victory when he defeated death and he returned to his father in heaven. His life wasn't a game, but you know, our lives aren't a game either. While we can talk about the game of life, we all come to that day of reckoning in life that they have in the board game. And the question for us is, where will we be? You see, there is a question there, where will we be when we come to the day of reckoning? And the next slide made me, it made me think about this next game that comes up. I keep pointing at the wrong place. This is a game, maybe not many people maybe will have seen this. It's a game called Downfall. And I remember whenever we got this game, it was at Christmas. Actually, my brother got it. But it was a good game and it was fun to play. And they had a board that stood upright like that. You know, when you play a board game, it's normally a flat board. Well, this board stood upright like that. It was a vertical board. And you had wee counters and you put them into the top of the board. And then what you had to try and do was turn those wee dials and get all of your counters to the bottom. Before the, the other person whose counters were on the other side of the board got their counters to the bottom. But they could turn the dials the other way when you took turns. So it wasn't just as easy as turning it until you got them to the bottom. But whenever I thought about downfall, I thought about that game downfall. And it made me think about a fall. A downfall. The Bible tells us in, in Genesis, in the very first book of the Bible, about how Adam and Eve, they had a fall. It tells us that they fell and to sin. You'll remember that God had told them that there was one tree in the Garden of Eden that they weren't to eat of. And they weren't to take of the fruit of that tree. But the devil came and he spoke to Eve and he said to Eve, No, you'll be alright if you take of that fruit. You'll be okay. Nothing will happen to you. So she took of the fruit and she gave to Adam and they both ate. And when they did that and they disobeyed God, sin entered into the world, didn't it? And sin brought death. Sin brought sickness. Sin brought tiredness and all of these things upon all people. You see, it was the fall of man. Do you know, we think about a game. Sin's not a game either. The fall is not a game. It's very serious. Because it was the fall, it was sin that separates us from God. And we can't fix sin ourselves. We can't work out these things ourselves. We need someone to deal with it for us. And that someone is the Lord Jesus Christ. We need a saviour. The Father sent the Son to be the saviour of the world. And I've given you the answer to the next game that comes up on the screen here. There we are. It's Guess Who. Lots of people like to play Guess Who. And in Guess Who, every per each board has 24 faces. And those 24 faces, and they have a name on them, and you pick a person that you're going to be, and the other person picks a person that they're going to be, and then you have to ask each other questions to try and find out who is go who the other person is. So for example, this person here, and you can't really see it on the screen, but he's got a beard and he's got no hair and his name's David. And I really don't know what that means, but 
Do you know what? I was looking at that and I thought that was telling me something. So you might ask questions and you might say, well, does he have a beard? And then the other person will say, well, no, they don't. So you take down all the people on your side with the beards and then you work out which person the other person is, is pretending to be. And you have to try and guess. And the winner is the person who guesses who the other person is. Now, we need a saviour. But we don't have to guess who. Because the Bible tells us that the Father sent the Son to be the saviour of the world. It tells us that in our verse. The Father sent the Son to be the saviour of the world. The Son is the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know, boys and girls, some people think that they don't need a saviour. Some people think that they're smart enough. Some people think that they're good enough. And, and, they, and because they think all of those things, they, they live their lives doing things that are just out to please themselves. And people live lives to please themselves. And on our next slide, we're going to see here that some people live their lives and they, have, they, do, they go on a trivial pursuit. Now, the game Trivial Pursuit, what that means, I'm going to explain it to you very simply. A trivial pursuit is where you're trying to do something, but there's really no reason for doing it. There's no purpose for doing it. But really that game, Trivial Pursuit, it's a game to see how smart you are. And the family edition, the one that that photograph was from, there's questions for children and there's questions for adults. And sometimes whenever we're playing it, some people in our house uh, don't want to be adults anymore because they want the kids' questions. And uh, it could be me, but I'm not admitting that. But anyway, the game really is to see how smart you are. And you have, to, you have to answer different questions. Maybe it's a geography question. Maybe it's a sport question. Maybe it's a nature question. It could be all sorts of different questions. And the winner will be the person who answers their, all their questions first and gets to the middle of the board. The smartest person wins. But did you know that you could be the smartest person in the whole wide world and still not go to heaven? The Bible tells us in our next uh, slide here, it tells us that there are those who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. People who are seeking after knowing everything. And they want to know everything. And they keep trying to learn. But salvation isn't just for smart people. It's so simple that a young child can understand it. What did our verse say? Boys and girls, can anybody remember what our verse said? The father... The father... No. The father sent the son to be... The saviour of the world. He sent the son to be the saviour of the world. Not just the smart people. But everybody. Do you know there's another game that I thought about here. And it's Monopoly. I mentioned it at the start. And this is one of my favourite games. And it can take a very long time to play Monopoly. You know you could play a game of Monopoly all day and still not be finished. It's a very very long game sometimes. But you have to go around the board. The Monopoly board. And you have to try and buy as many different properties as you can. And then after you've bought them, then you build houses on them and you build hotels on them. And then somebody comes along and they land on one of your properties. And when they land on one of your properties, they have to pay you money. And the winner in the game is the person who gets the most money and has the most property at the end. The richest person wins in Monopoly. Did you know that you can be the richest person in the whole world and still not go to heaven? That's what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us in our next slide, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You can be the richest person in the world. You can have all the money that you could ever imagine, but not go to heaven because you haven't trusted Jesus. You see, only Jesus can save us. Not our money, not our riches. What did the verse say? The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. We need a saviour. We don't need all the wealth of this world. We need Jesus. The last game is a game which is called Balderdash. It's a very funny word. And there are words, the, the the game, what you have to do in this, there are words in it, and most people don't actually know how to pronounce the words, never mind how to, uh, or know what, what the words mean. And you have to try and work out what the meaning of the word is. So what you do is everybody makes up their own meaning for a particular word. And they put that into the middle. And then the person who's who's looking after, who's controlling the game, they read everybody's answers out. And then everybody has to try and guess which is actually the real meaning of the word. And the trick is to try and come up with such a meaning for the word that other people will think, oh, that sounds good. That sounds like that might be it. I'll pick it. Because for every person who picks your answer, 
you get a point. And the more points you get, the more you win. But you know, there are people in this world who will try and convince you that they know better. There are people in this world who will, who will try and tell you that what their, 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 their belief is, is right. They'll try and tell you something. And they'll say, for example, that, well, God didn't make the world. And they'll say that there's such a thing as evolution. God didn't create the world. They'll say it just happened in a big bang, a big explosion, and the world just came into being. Can you imagine that? Does that sound even sensible at all? That there was just an explosion and then the world just appeared. Isn't it really silly? Imagine if when James was built in this church here a few years back and James just came along one day and he, he, got, he got onto the site and he just brought in trailer loads of bricks and mortar and tiles and all sorts of stuff and he just piled it up in the middle of the church, in, in the middle of the ground there and then he just blew it all up. Do you think that would have built the church? No. no. Well, that's what evolution teaches. It teaches there was a big bang and everything all came together and it all, it all formed properly. It's just silly. It's just nonsense. There's other people who say there's no God. But the Bible tells us there is a God. People will try to convince you, no, there's no God. God didn't create the world. God doesn't even exist. But the Bible says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool. Person who's talking nonsense. And the word balderdash that we use there is that title. That's what it means. It means nonsense. And the Bible tells us in our next verse from Ecclesiastes chapter 10, it says the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness and the end of his talk is mischievous madness. What does that mean? It means that they're talking nonsense. That's what it means. Do you know there's something that you can depend upon, boys and girls? There's something that everybody here can depend upon. In Kids Club this year, they've been learning about how you can depend upon the Bible. You can trust the Word of God because it's true. And you can trust God because He is truth. Now what does God say? What did our verse say? Can anybody remember? It comes up on the screen again. The Father sent the Son to be... Anybody tell me? Faith. The saviour of the world. The Father sent the Son to be the saviour of the world. You see, the way of salvation is not through us. The way of salvation is not through people. The way of salvation is not through money, nor is it through being smart or any of those things. The way of salvation is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The baby that we remember at this time of year. The baby that we, we think about at this time of year is just a little baby, but he grew up and he became the Christ on the cross of Calvary. He became the Savior for all of those who will trust in his name. Boys and girls, mummies and daddies, grannies and grandas, aunties and uncles, whoever might be here, do you know him as your Savior? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? You see, you can try lots of different things. You can say, well, my way is the best way. I know more than anybody else. I'm smarter than anybody else. I'm richer than anybody else. Here's what it all comes down to. Do you know Jesus? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Savior? I trust that you do. I thank you, boys and girls, for, for sitting up and listening. We're going to sing a hymn just to close. And immediately after that, then Nigel Bruce, one of our, our elders here in the church, is going to come and close in prayer and give thanks for the supper. So we'll stand to sing, and then after that, Nigel will come.
pray together. Father, we thank you for today and we thank you for everyone who has taken part and Lord, just the way the whole message of Christmas has been displayed. But Father, it's very easy to be able to sit and to be able to take in what's being said but not apply it to our lives. And Father, we pray that each person here would know what it is to apply what they've heard to their lives. Father, our pastor has even shared with us that so often we believe the gospel message to be so complicated. And the world can make it complicated and Satan can make it complicated. But Father, it is so simple. And what a wonderful message of salvation. What a wonderful gift. And we say thanks be unto God for his unspeakable.